back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Today I have some very exciting news. If you guys cannot tell from the title, I am adopting another guinea pig. So honestly, this was not planned at all. I was not really expecting to add another guinea pig to my herd until I moved into a new place where I could make my cage larger. But I was like browsing on like, um, rehoming websites for guinea pigs and I stumbled across this guinea pig that was 30 minutes away from me and it was in not the best living conditions and honestly I look on those pages all the time just to see what kind of guinea pigs are around me because I just kind of want to know my what my options are you know I just like to look at the available guinea pigs for rehoming but this guinea pig is in like a bird cage like literally like the picture of the cage it's like some type of like bird or like rat cage with like multiple tiny levels and like lots of ramps and like a random hammock. Like it looks like the cage was like put together and decorated for a rat and they put a guinea pig in it. Like honestly, it does not look like very good living conditions. And so I just like on an impulse sort of reached out to the person who's rehoming their guinea pig and just asked a couple questions like the age of the guinea pig. And it turns out that this guinea pig is five years old is what the, was what the previous owner said. And I was honestly very shocked by that because to me like five years old is kind of approaching like an elderly like older guinea pig and for an older guinea pig to be in that sort of habitat where it has to like climb up those levels and there's like a chance of it like falling and like breaking its leg like there was just a lot happening with that cage that made me not like feel so great about leaving that guinea pig in that situation and like I said um I don't have a lot of space in this apartment and I didn't really want to take another guinea pig in until I moved into my new place but but I did not feel right just leaving this guinea pig in that kind of situation. So here we are. Um, I have decided to take it in. Like I said, they said it was five years old and it has never lived with another guinea pig in its entire life. So because of that and the fact that it is a lot older than my three girls, so mine are all around one year and they're very like, I don't want to say hormonal, but they're a little hormonal. They're very energetic. Like it's they're young, right? Like it's the start of their life. Like they're very young and they're, you know, like they like mess around with each other. Like they do a lot of stuff that I feel like older guinea pigs may get annoyed by. So until I can make this cage right here larger, because while it is 16 square feet, I told myself that I was not going to add a fourth guinea pig into this cage until I can make it larger because I want to do more than the minimum. Like I want to do better than giving them the minimum amount of space and like crowding them together. So I will be putting this new guinea pig underneath my table. So underneath the this one table right here is where I'm going to put it. I'm going to DIY a eight square foot cage to put right underneath here. And then yet another surprise, I'm moving into my new apartment in August where I will be able to expand this cage and make it larger. And once that happens, I plan to attempt the bonding process with all four of them so that sh the new picky will be able to have some friends and just, you know, really be able to like enjoy, you know, her elderly years of her life. But for now, I will be keeping her separate down underneath. Obviously you should quarantine your guinea pigs for the first two weeks after you get them before you bond them anyway. So her quarantine period is just going to be a little bit longer. So I'm gonna wait until I can make my cage bigger. And for now she will be going underneath. But as she's lived alone, you know, for five years of her life, I really don't think two more months is going to be that big of a deal. But yeah, so today's video is going to be me constructing this new cage and reconfiguring my guinea pig space to be able to fit her down there. And then the next video will be me adopting her and me bringing her home and kind of like what her general cage setup looks like with her in it. So yeah, this is gonna be a little bit of a two-part series. I'm super excited and also super, super nervous. I am excited to build the cage, but I'm nervous about having an older guinea pig since I have not had one before. I'm a little worried because I know like with older guinea pigs, they can have like more health issues and you really have to keep a, like a closer eye on their weight and their well-being, their diet, their intake, their like personality. Like you really need to keep a closer eye on that since they are getting into the older years of their life. And again, I don't really know how well the skinny pig has been fed or like treated for the first five years of its life. So it could, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna have to be more aware and more conscious. And I wasn't expecting to have an older guinea pig like this early in my guinea pig care journey, but I do feel that I have read a lot of resources. There are more resources, re ugh, more resources that I'm going to read. And I just did not feel right leaving that guinea pig in that situation. So yeah, um, we're going to be welcoming a new guinea pig to the family. And for today's video, I'm going to be reconfiguring the space and setting up that new cage. All right, so basically since the 
page is going to be going underneath this table right here. I have to find a way to condense all of my storage into one table. Like the stuff that I mainly use is going to go back here. And the stuff that I occasionally use, like that giant box of like random guinea pig stuff back there is going to be moved underneath my bed on the opposite side. Basically just gonna be a bit of like shuffling around to try and make this work. So I have just finished creating the space that I'm going to need to heap her underneath the table. And I think during that time lapse, I may have accidentally unplugged my like ring light. So sorry if the lighting changed randomly. But yeah, I'm just gonna show you guys the space underneath and then what I plan to use to build the cage. All right, so this is basically what we are working with. This is going to be enough to basically build a Midwest size cage. I don't have a Midwest, but I'm going to be using Poraplast to sort of build a cage right here. And then over here, I have the stuff I would use every day, like my pee pads, some of my fleeces, my hay, and then that's my dirty laundry and my vacuum. And then underneath my bed. I have extra guinea pig stuff, bedding, um, miscellaneous stuff that I use while cleaning and like grooming stuff all in there. And then more fleece and hides here. So this is basically stuff that I would use when I'm cleaning the cage. And then all the stuff I use on a regular basis is right over here. So for the cage, I am going to be taking down these three grids right here. And I'm going to be using those as well as two other white grids that I have in my playpen. And then I'm basically just going to be putting those together and then using Coraplast. <laughs> Hi, Pepper. Using Coraplast as the back of the cage as well as the bottom. So I don't have enough grids to make a back, but I'm just gonna make a solid back out of like Coraplast. So now that I've taken off the grids, it just looks like this. And that's just a piece of cardboard. And I just used the binder clips that were securing the fabric to also hold it in place on the grids. All right, so now it is time to construct the actual cage. I'm going to be completely honest, this process left me very, very frustrated. I don't know what it is about making CNC cages, but I felt the exact same way when I made my loft and it was just absolutely infuriating trying to get the dimensions right. And I even had a tape measure this time and it was still just such a struggle. But I will still be showing you guys how I did it and sharing with you the process. Hopefully you have a little bit of better luck than I did. But first I am constructing the front three sides of my cages. So for the front, I'm using four CNC panels and I'm overlapping them slightly to make it approximately four feet long because that is all the space that I have available under the table. And then for the two sides of the cage, I'm going to be using my leftover Midwest grids because they are exactly 24 inches. So I have one of the grids from when I combined my two Midwest cages. So it is a solid grid. And then the other grid that I have is actually meant to be the like divider for my original Midwest cage. So I just removed the ramp from this because it had two ramps. So I took off one of them and then I folded up the other one and then used a zip tie to secure it to make sure it would not fall open. Once I finished building the two sides and the front of my cage out of the grids, I just pulled in my ginormous sheet of Coraplast. This sheet of Coraplast is I believe eight feet by four feet. So it is absolutely huge, but I didn't wanna get anything smaller because I was worried that I would make mistakes and like run out of Coraplast. So I just used the four grids that I'd made for the front as a reference for the size of the back of the cage. Since the back of the cage is going to be made solely out of Coraplast, I used the grids on the front for a measurement of how large that should be. And I used a box cutter to cut and score the Coraplast. All right, so now that I have made the back for the cage, it is time to measure out the bottom and the sides. So basically I am just moving around my grids and using my measuring tape and just sort of figuring out the dimensions that I need for the base of the cage and then just cutting slits for where the sides are going to go. And eventually after this, I did trim down the sides so they wouldn't be so tall. But for now I was just focusing on getting the bottom of the cage to be the right shape.
two sides and the front to be the height that I wanted them. I was left with this cage, which honestly looks so, so good. And I am really happy with the way it came out, even though I was super, super stressed about it. And so the next step now was just to duct tape all of the chloroplast in place so that the sides stay up. And then I also had to apply some duct tape to the back of the cage where the back meant the floor, because for some reason when I was scoring it with a box cutter, in some places I actually cut all the way through the chloroplast. So I just used some duct tape here in case she happened to pee back here so it wouldn't leak through the corner of the cage. And then I also stabbed some holes in the side of the chloroplast and used zip ties to secure the grids to the chloroplast. Next up, I had to create a way for me to open the front of the cage since I was not going to be sliding the cage out from underneath the table every single time I had to clean it. So I decided to use binder clips for the top of the grids and then keep zip ties at the bottom. So that way I would just be able to fold open the front of the grids to feed her, to give her hay and to clean out the cage. All right, so this is the finished product. I think it looks great. The only thing is I do have to have the legs for the table inside the literal cage cage um there was no other way to do it because the cage is like wider than the table so it couldn't go in between the two legs so over here i just have it up against the legs and then here it, the legs are in the cage i really don't think it'll be too much of a deal i can just slightly lift up the table when i'm cleaning and need to put fleece under and i will just make sure that i sanitize the legs when i spray and clean out the bottom of the cage as well but yeah i am super pleased with it in the way i have it to clean is that I just have these binder clips on these two parts right here and then as you can see it just falls open and um, it'll allow me to reach in and like pet her and clean out the cage really easy and yeah I'm just super excited and I'm just gonna quickly set it up so it'll be already ready for when she gets here. so much for watching this video about how I built this cage. I hope you guys enjoyed and look forward to the video where I bring that new piggy home. I am super, super excited and it will probably be posted soon after this one. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and leave a like down below if you enjoyed and subscribe to see more of my content and to in the future see that video about my new piggy. Uh, I can't believe it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye-bye.